Coming up next, we're going to break down everything Imola, as well as where is the next race in the United States will be held out. We'll have that next for you. Hey guys, welcome in. On behalf of Chaz Day and the Mike Allen, I'm Brock Young, welcoming you into another edition of the F1 Starting Grid. And guys, just one question right off the bat. Did y'all survive the weekend? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it was it was good to have it, uh, you know, to have a race, to have something to look forward to. You know, I couldn't wait to, to settle in and you know, I, I took the whole thing in, everything from the uh, qualifying to everything. And it was, it was a fun weekend. I enjoyed it. Awesome. And before we get to the big news item of that race, I want to break down who, what the starting order was. We have Max finishing, then uh, right behind it, Lewis came out from all the way from 10th to finish in second place. Lando Norris had a great race here, finished in third. The two Ferraris finished back to back in fourth and fifth. We have Daniel Ricciardo and the McLaren also fitting, finishing in sixth. Pierre Gasly had a strong finish in seventh with his Alfa Toria Honda. Lance my Stroll. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Lance Stroll and the Mo Ashton Martin Mercedes in eighth. Two, the two Alpines finished in points, ninth and tenth. Pierre Gasly, I'm sorry, I'm mixed that up right there. Sergio Perez finished just out of points in the Red Bull Honda at 11th. Twelfth is Yuki Tsunoda in the Alfa Toria Honda. Kimi Raikkonen and Antonio Giovinazzi finished in 13th and 14th, respectively, with their Alfa Romeo racing team, as well as the two horses finishing 16th and 17th, and the three teams that did not finish, or three drivers that did not finish, I should say. We have Valtteri Bottas in the Mercedes, George Russell in the Williams, and Nicholas Latifi for the Williams. Mike, I'm sorry, this was not a good week for the Williams. Uh, but one thing I do want to talk to you, since we have a Mercedes guy, we have a Williams guy. I'll just say this right off the bat. I'm not going to read his whole entire quote, but uh, George Russell came out on Monday saying that the wreck was his fault. And no he, shit. Apologized, he apologized to his teammates. He apologized to Valtteri. Um, and apparently Toto Wolf had a private meeting between both of them and everything pretty much is worked out. But so before we have a Mercedes guy, we have a Williams guy. I want to get into this a little bit. So, Chaz, I know this is going to be short and sweet with you. Uh, your take on that wreck? No shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have Chaz's take. So, Mike, what's your take on it? Well, I was kind of busting Chaz's chest, but George tried to fit his car where, where it couldn't fit and went on a blind side. And, and you don't do that in racing. Uh, he tried to blame it on the grass and everything else like that. The, the gap was not there. Uh, and so he, he's the one that caused the wreck. Now, I'm a Williams guy, but, you know, the, I, I saw when it, when it happened, the only thing that went through my head is, what the hell are you trying? What are you doing? <laughs> Wait till you get to a cleaner part of the course. You know, if you're going to overtake Botas, do it on a, on a cleaner part of the course, not where no one else in the entire race overcame anybody on that very, uh, the very narrow back stretch where you have, and it's wet and you have grass and you're on slick tires. I mean, it doesn't make any sense that he would try to fit his car in there. So, uh, yeah, that was a clear case of him trying to, to, to overcome Botas and went for a gap that wasn't there. And Botas had the right of way. That per the racing rules, he had the right of way. He did. They, um, but if I just yeah, say he did have the dry line. So you can't, I mean, you got to overtake on a, on a clear path, so not right quick. Um, and I, correct me if I'm wrong on this. Uh, it was Botas eighth and William, um, George Russell at ninth when the wreck happened. Yeah. Okay. So I think. I think George Russell, he mentioned this in his comment that he was just excited about being in points. He was trying to act, trying to get for that extra points. And uh, the original original discussion was that, you know, Botas, he's already fallen down. He doesn't need the points right now. He was trying to 
get up in positions to help Williams get those points. So I guess he was just, you know, almost too excited. To yeah. I was going to say the same thing, Brock. I actually, in, in his defense, if there is anything that you want to see from a team that's doing as poorly as Williams, you at least want to see some spunk. You at least want to see some fire. You at least want to see them, you know, taking it to, especially, you know, the best team, right? Um, so if they're going to go out, if they're going to, to, to fail, I'd rather see uh, them fail in going for the gusto, trying to, uh, you know, pass competitors than just sliding out for no reason or, you know, crashing into uh, each other or some other bullshit, right? Like, I'm, I'm at least glad that they're going for it. I think that it was poorly timed, and I think that, you know, it doesn't make sense it, it, it shows a little bit of a lack of awareness because you're trying to, because of who you're trying to pass, like you're, you're trying to pass a Mercedes and have you forgotten what car you're in? Right. Like, you, like, so I don't, I don't even know what you were thinking, but I mean, if you are going to take any sort of positive out of this, I would take the fact that they are still fighting as a, as a positive takeaway. And, and they have improved from last year. I mean, for the second race in a row, I mean, this time both Williams, I think, made it into the top 15, if I'm not mistaken. I know George did, definitely. Yep. And uh, he almost made it into the top 10. He was a fraction of a second. And again, he was right there at P11. So, uh, you know, you, you, they're improving. And I think Jazz is right. I think there's a little youthful exuberance. He got excited. I don't know how many laps. They had plenty of race left. No, did. It was yeah. right, right, in the, right in the middle of the race. Yeah, right. I mean, he had plenty of race left to back off and, and strategize a little better. His car was obviously performing better than Botas's car. I think Botas had some mechanical issues that were in his vehicle that were slowing him down. That's why he was so far in the back mm -hmm. of the pack. So uh, if this is a lesson for George, it's have patience. It's a long race. Well, um, on that <laughs> On that point you just mentioned about the, uh, and you mentioned this earlier too, that Botas, yes, Botas had the line. Uh, yeah, he had the but, line. He was, but, was in the, he, yeah. But uh, yeah. Russell had more of a pace because of Botas' right. issue, uh, mechanical issues going on. So right. Russell had more of a pace. So they, once again, probably just the youthness in him, um, like what happened to Yuki Tsunoda and him. One point or the other, every single car, either through, uh, practice qualifying the race itself ran off the track mm -hmm. because it was wet. It was just, just a bad made great entertainment for us, <laughs> but right. Um, <laughs> Except but was, for, I mean, even Maspin, although he didn't wreck this time, probably drove twice as far as everybody else in that race. <laughs> by going off the track. <laughs> well, before we get to uh, how Max and Lewis performed over the weekend, um, result of our picks, Mike, you're still in first, of course, with 84 points. Chaz, we are at 69, and I smell a comeback with myself at 44 points. So, all I have to do, all I have to do, is just pick Verstappen as number one, and he's either going to be one or two. Had <laughs> my lead. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this like uh, Alan Prost. I don't have to win every race. I just have to be in the top two. <laughs> I'll win the championship. <laughs> well, no, thank you, man. I lost my thought on that one. Appreciate that. Actually, <laughs> no, um, the standings right now, we have Lewis is still in the lead only by one point because he had the faster lap, the fastest lap out of Imla. So he has Trying 44 to points, yeah. 44 points, okay. followed by uh, Max with 43 points. But I cannot deny um yes we talked about this just right off the air here lewis they come from a 10th to all the way to second from that wreck and that's honestly the uh botas and half that was with a broken front wing that didn't get replaced until they had a yellow flag true true even the red flag it couldn't make a red flag there. red flag yeah but actually that the botas 
Botas, Russell incident helped Lewis a little bit, you know, gain that perspective back. But honestly, I cannot take away anything from Max. He just ran almost an almost perfect race in a very wet, wet condition, stayed on the intermediates the perfect amount of time, then went to slicks. Um, and if I'm not wrong, he beat Lewis by 22 seconds, even oh, though yeah. Lewis, Lewis yeah, was yeah. in traffic. He Lewis was, was in traffic, but um, Lando... We'll get to him in a minute. He was trying to push the McLaren as much as possible to beat Lewis, but Lewis just had a faster pace behind that. But what do you think about uh, that performance from Max there, Mike? Like you said, he ran a perfect race. He had pole position. He took off. He was ahead of everybody. Didn't didn't make any big mistakes. He has a great running car and uh, stayed on the track and got so far out and ahead that he could then back off a little bit, relax, save his wheels, save his car, didn't have to, to make silly mistakes or didn't, was not put into position to have to, uh, you know, do crazy things. He just had to keep it in the line, keep his car running uh, in temperature and, and just cruise to the victory, really. Just one correction on that. He did not have pole. He was actually in third, but he beat Lewis to the line before the first for the first curve. Yes, yeah, so you're the right. first turn yeah. of the first lap. And that was incredible. Yeah, and that's where uh, Lewis – is that where Lewis bumped his wing during that whole melee? Because I know his wing no, was – it would, he, he did hurt his car, but that wasn't the wing. He, he slid off the track and hit uh, like a barrier wow. right right before the Russell Botas accident. Okay. In fact, right. there were, the camera was on Lewis trying to back out of the gravel, then all of a sudden the wreck happened, and they had to hurry and switch to that – that covered. Yeah, you're right. Um, but Chaz, what do you think about both Max and Lewis's performance over the weekend? So I, a lot of people have been talking about it um, easily over the last like couple of years, definitely uh, since the beginning of this year, especially after the first race. Um, a lot of people are just talking about how like he's just a champion. Like he, he just is, I, I don't know that Lewis has had a, a more real challenge. I know we've been kind of alluding to it, but I don't know if he's had a, a more real challenge than uh, what's coming this season. Um, I would even say if you were to just look at this season so far, um, Verstappen is the favorite in my, my personal opinion. Um, as far as the, just from like the pace that he's had in the first two races, um, you have to say that he's the favorite to even win the driver's championship at, at, at this point up to today, if we were going to crown a, uh, an MVP of sorts, right. Mm -hmm. uh, which in our case is just a, a driver's championship. It, it would, it would have to be Verstappen. And I don't even really know that it's that close. Well, I'm going to start a, a hashtag movement right now. Oh, by the way, let me, to your point, um, I heard about this earlier too, that this is probably the closest, even though Ferrari gave him, gave Lewis a run back in like 17, 18, this is probably the closest anybody has been to Lewis since probably Nico Rosberg. Yeah, I was just <laughs> going to, I was just going to say that I was waiting for a, this, this will be a battle on that level. If, if, mm -hmm. both, if both drivers can stay healthy, if, both car, if, if the mechanics can keep the cars running, this is going to be on par with that. And I would even say, you know, some of the great battles, you know, Alain Prost and Senna. Uh, of course, Rush, the movie Rush with, with Hunt and Lauda. I mean, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be fun to watch. And I would say the difference between the years with Ferrari is that, uh, is that Red Bull is going to be consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, Ferrari was was tremendously inconsistent. I mean, they would have races where they were absolutely dominant, and then races where uh, I mean they couldn't they they couldn't get past you know second or I'm sorry third place. Um, they were they were just struggling, and and that's that's been the deal with Ferrari for a while. Um, but yeah, I think that's the major difference here. I, I like Red Bull is proper dominant and the only reason why you know even coming into this season i think that they aren't the favorite is one they haven't won a, a world championship in in uh since Vettel. 
Um, but, uh, but also, um, it's, uh, it's just a perception thing, right? Like if you were, you know, Las Vegas odds makers, you know, you just, you just wouldn't rate them as high as you would Mercedes. But I mean, if you were just going purely on, on mechanics and engineering, I mean, gosh, dog it, like their car, uh, their car and, 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 and driver combos is just super strong. Uh, I, I mean, and their, their driver combo to me is, is better than, than Mercedes. I don't, I don't even think that's, I don't think anybody's debating that. No. Um, but, uh, but, but the car too, man, they're, they're really, really fast. Now we said this many times before, um, Mike and I are under the impression that this is going to be Lewis Hamilton's last year, but just a little bit of me, just a little bit of me just wants to have, Lewis come back next season, so we have more of a season between him and Max, mm. and just have this exciting battle between the two. But I'm excited about this because this is what I wanted. I wanted a close race. I said this before the season. This is going to be closer than many years past, and I love that. Yeah. I just absolutely love that. So I'm going, <laughs> Chaz. You're <laughs> going to hate me, but I'm going to, and then maybe just like three people will join this. But I'm going to start a hashtag movement. Uh, hashtag ABM, anybody but Mercedes. Hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? No, I'm going to that right, right on the don't screen don't right here. ABM. Anybody but Mercedes. Well, here's my here's my prediction. If, if Hamilton wins the, the drivers championship, which you know, and I said at the beginning of the year it was his to lose. Now I'm thinking he's going to have a fight in the sands. But if he wins the if he wins the drivers championship, he'll retire. If he loses out in a close, very very close battle between him and Max Verstappen, uh, you know, he he might come back for another year, maybe, mm-hmm. but. There's really nothing more other than beating Schumacher's all-time driver championship streak. Right. He's got. Which um, I mean, you he, might as well. You yeah, might I mean, well. you might as well. Yeah, exactly. But he. Uh, but if he just if he if he bows out, if something happens with the car, if he gets sick, if you know Mercedes takes a dive, and he just not even in the points or even close, he will be back next year. I think he. Uh, but if he wins it this year, I think he'll retire. If he gets his number eight, he'll be done. It makes sense. I mean, who who else is going to beat you in the near future? Like they'd have to, they'd have to accumulate the first seven first, right? right. <laughs> like, <there's>, uh, <laughs> yeah. so it's, yeah, it, it's it's, yeah, it's it's pretty pr- a pretty convincing thing if he can do. If he, I feel like he has a better shot of coming back if he doesn't win this year, because then he then he will have something else to prove. Yep. And, um, and, and Brock, if you do decide to do that ABM hashtag, uh, that's fine. I, I will also start a, a hashtag. It will also be ABM and it'll just stand for, uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll pair it with yours. So you can have anyone but Mercedes and I'll just have that. That's a bad motto. So <laughs> we'll just, you know what? It'll, it'll create a movement. So we'll see. You know, ABM, ABM. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I'm going to have a hashtag that says hashtag Williams is nine car crashes away from points. <laughs> <laughs> Can you shorten that a little bit? No, no. <laughs> nine is the number. They can't shorten it. <laughs> oh, that's priceless. Uh, that is priceless. I love it. Um, but guys, let's move let's move on here for a little bit. But what about Lando? I was so surprised. I would think that um, maybe even Charles, right? Player in orange. <laughs> well, it, and you know, Lando, uh, I think he was having problems in the end with his tires, and that's why he was so. having a hard time holding off Hamilton. Had he yeah. had hundred percent, he might have been able to get a little bit of a gap there and, and take P two. Because he fought back. Yeah. Well, both the McLarens fought back. So I mean, it's exciting to see some 
some historic teams finally get in the top 10. And it was nice to see Ferrari. You know, I'm not. Except a, for Mercedes, uh, Williams. <laughs> but yeah, but I get your point. But I get your point. Okay. <laughs> Their day will come eventually sometime. They, I don't know. I think they should partner back up with BMW because that's when they had their best years is when they were, was when BMW was their power plant. But yep. right now they're just, this, really they're just Mercedes second team right now. So I don't think, uh, and it's, you know, the Williams family isn't involved in it. Well, they're involved on a uh, token through their name. They're getting paid for the name, but well, the entire Williams family is retired. Uh, from from F1. To your, to your point, Mike, I actually think a Mercedes uh, would do better than a Williams right now. Uh, I mean, and, and literally any Mercedes, like a Mercedes X5 on track would probably finish higher than a Williams right now. A full size. You, oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't hear. You, you're breaking up. It was all got fuzzy. I didn't. You know, I was just saying, I, <laughs> I, I, I agree. I think you're absolutely right. <laughs> Our day will come. We will rise from the ashes. You to be will. fair, Chaz, though, they did fit, if they didn't wreck out, they would have finished higher than Hoss. This is this is true. This is true. They would. Well, I, I mean, they, that's that's the place that they're they're in. It doesn't mean that that's where they would have finished. It, and 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 thank God for Zach Brown representing Americans well in in Formula One <laughs> because Hoss. I mean, trash. Yeah. At least they finished. At least, at least they finished. All right. All right. Well, we're. I guess. I guess we're. uh, We're setting the bar that low. Yes. (laughs) For for this year, yes. (laughs) But back to uh, McLaren with. uh, Do they get a pin for showing up too? Every 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 time Williams every time uh, Williams and Haas shows up, they're just gonna give them a pin. Right? Hey, Guta wouldn't. Hey, Guta would not Williams curse has that been much. Almost breaking into the top ten in qualifying, so they're just right there. They're close. Give them give them time. They got to do some improvements on their car. They got to move those chips around or whatever the hell it is. And then we just gotta hope like look like eight or nine cars wreck out. How much time do you think they'll need? Like, like six to 12 I years? Think, no, I think by the end of the season, they'll be mid midfield, strong midfield. Which season? 2042? No, this season. <laughs> May I remind you that a Williams car was battling for P9 when George made that stupid mistake and crashed out. Had they not crashed, he may have been able to overtake uh, – Botas, because Botas's car was not not handling well. Something was wrong with it. If he had just been patient, he could have been in the top ten and been in the points. And that's you know that's yeah. I mean, I I feel cars improved since the first race. So and they've got a different lead. They got different mechanics. Got different engineers working on it. So they'll be strong midfield. Will they win a race? No, I don't think they'll win. But I think George will win the points. No, I mean here have zero points. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. I, <laughs> obviously, they won't. They won't win a race. Even as far as like getting points, though, I do feel inspired and optimistic about your blind optimism. That that makes me feel. <laughs> no, no, that, I, that makes me feel inspired and optimistic. So good for you, man. <laughs> Moving on, um, let's go. Back to this the Lions are going to make the playoffs too. <laughs> I don't know what's in the water over there in Huddle, man. But um, anyway, let's um, let's talk about. I want to talk about this McLaren right quick and the fact that both yes, y'all both said that uh, both Lando and Daniel finished strong, but and it it's just been two races, but it seems like Lando is getting the best of this McLaren, um, even though this is Daniel Ricardo's first year with. McLaren, he's also in a sense a seasoned veteran. Wait, where did he finish? Uh, six or seven? Six, right behind the six, Ferraris. Six. Okay. Now he was strong. He was up there. He was right behind the Ferraris too, which were right, yeah. which was right behind 
Lando Norris, but Lando, once again, got the best of him. Right. It's so it's so strange to me that like uh, Ricardo, it it almost doesn't matter what car he's in, he finishes in around the same spot. Yeah. Right. Like he was finishing around that sixth set spot in the Re- Renault. And towards the end of the career in, in Red Bull as well. Right. I, I, I don't know what I don't know what that is, but it almost doesn't matter what car he's in. I guess he's just proven to be a good mid-tier driver, upper mid-tier driver. I mean, he's a really good he's a really good driver, but he's just not that world champion material. So, I could so be wrong. You, so do you think Lando is sitting at P2 going, oh my God, I gotta get a couple cars to get past me here before the end? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I um, think every driver gets in there to win, and you know. Uh, yeah. But uh, he, you know, to, to tell you the truth, until this year, McLaren really hasn't given him a. Or, he, he was with uh, last year. Renault. Renault. <laughs> Come on, Renault. I mean, Renault's- Renault didn't give him a good car to run in, and. Well, Renault was pretty strong. I mean, they finished higher. Are they what? They finished fourth last season, behind McLaren. Fourth. Fourth or fifth? Uh, fourth. They they finished fourth. McLaren was third. Yep. So, Ren- Renault was actually pretty good, not great, but pretty good last season. Um, so they he had a car underneath him. In fact, he won one or two races. You no, know, I think they might have been fifth because Ferrari. Would have been Ferrari was six. Ferrari was garbage last year. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's the big deal that they're making a comeback right now, which is perfect, perfect time and the perfect segue yeah. there. Um, well, and I'm glad they are. I mean, they're kind of they they're kind of the New York Yankees of the F1 world because they dominated for so many years. Well, they're expected to. I mean, you look at every other team there. You got Mercedes. Um, I'm talking about um, the power units, the structure of teams of the power units, the Mercedes, the Hondas, the Renaults. They have their main source of income and their main priority is selling cars. Ferrari was built and still is, to this day is dedicated to racing Formula One. So the yes, they're expected to win, um, and they and they do. I mean, they're pretty dominant in uh, uh, other races. Yeah, like Le Mans, they do real well. Uh, what's the other one? The sports car race name slips my mind. But they do. Yeah, they do pretty well, but. And they're performing much better than they did last season. Fourth and fifth, um, to be honest, on – yes, you could call it their second track because uh, Monza's not too far away. Uh, mm-hmm. Fourth and fifth in the wet, re- wet weather is very respectable for Ferrari. And, they're, in fact, in the constructor points right now, they're only seven points behind McLaren right now, which between Red Bull and Mercedes is a fight. Now we also have a fight between McLaren and Ferrari once again. An exciting season. This is what I wanted, you know. This is what yeah. every fan wanted, you know. So um, Ferrari has uh, sixteen constructors' titles. It's the most of any other constructor. And guess who's number two? Williams. <laughs> <laughs> but Chaz, what do you think about Ferrari's performance over the weekend, man? Um. I, I think that considering what they're working with, I, I definitely feel I feel good for Ferrari fans, right? Like I feel like, uh, you know, this season is shaking out to uh, to be better than expected. I know we've talked about it a few times, so um, yeah, I, I feel good for them. Good for good for them for like figuring it out uh at least being able to put together a season that has some semblance of 
you know, a victory that you can walk away with. Like, even if it's just kind of a moral victory of like, hey, you know, we don't have a, a car that's, abs- you know, absolute trash. Um, it's just kind of like, like, you know, like hot garbage. <laughs> <laughs> um it looks good standing still <laughs> absolutely it looks great standing still <laughs> absolutely well um mike i want to get your opinion on this because you had them second to last in your constructors uh alpine finished ninth in tenth both in points what do you think about that they're gonna have to make some adjustments i mean it's they're mid they're mid pack i don't see them making a run at the top five well, no, but they, they're fin- they're doing better than what you expected because I think you had them in the um, second to last on your yeah I had pitch. yeah because I had Williams above them and I had Haas and them in the dead last. You're right. Yeah, that's one of the surprises. I also had McLaren in midfield. <laughs> <laughs> Stuki also had a, had a, a nice comeback after he uh, after he spun out. He did, but he was still disappointed finishing 13th. Um, in fact, there was this um, little snapshot on Facebook with um, him cursing the entire race, which is fantastic to see. But one of them was whenever the uh, his team boss came on the radio, it's like, you know, you finished P13, P13, Yuki. And it's like, bleep, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I should have did better, you know. Yeah. But he... Um, he admits he needs to do, do better. Of course, he's a rookie at this, but yet he's finishing better than the two other rookies. Oh, uh, yeah. And he's finishing. <laughs> and he's finishing, too. Uh, he spun right. out, and yet he finished. So that's that's good to see. Um, Actually, last year, Ferrari was sixth mm-hmm. in constructors behind number five, Renault, and number four, Racing Point. Mm. And McLaren was third. So Ferrari and, and Alfa Toro Hondo was seventh. And then, of course, we had Alfa Romeo. That Those fire brands down there in Haas and Williams, Mercedes. Uh, the last the seven, eight, nine didn't even have points. <laughs> <laughs> I think they just kind of tossed them in the alphabetical order, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Matter of fact, they did. Alfa Torre, Alfa Romeo. Austin Williams, it's alphabetical order, no points. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chaz, before we move on to our last team, I want to get your opinion on um, on Battery Botas. Uh, once again, it's just the second race of the season. Mm-hmm. But it, he seems like, he, even though he had mechanical problems, he, he just seems as th- he's not there competing like he used to be, like right behind Lewis Hamilton. He's fallen, even though he finished um, on the podium over there in Bahrain, it just seems to me that he's just losing that steam. Like he used yeah, to. Yeah, and, and, we, and we saw the consequences too, right? Like, um, yeah. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a whole nother race for Mercedes, even strategically, when they don't have that second driver, right? So, like, if it's, um, you know, when, when they have only one Mercedes following a uh you know a red bull versus if they had two they like strategically they could go after them a little bit differently um now we have you know uh one mercedes or uh, a mercedes being chased by two red bulls and that didn't turn out well (laughs) for for mercedes so um so even strategically i know you know back at the garage mercedes is is really considering it because um it puts them at a serious disadvantage where if they're not coming in first like they're used to even when they're coming in like second place or 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 whatever or um like for example if botas had done what he's supposed to do which is come in either second or third you wouldn't have two red bulls at your tail so now you're even like having to uh be on more of a defensive when you when you first take off at the beginning of the race and we know how important the beginning of races are so it's 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 not even just you know the points um in in the most obvious way which is like him not coming in the points but it's also affecting uh hamilton's ability 
to even have good starts. Right. In fact, there was one commentator said that this is like the opposite of years past where you had two Mercedes and probably one Red Bull or one Ferrari. Now it's two Red Bulls and, and one Mercedes. Yeah. But I want to move on to the last team here and then move on to the uh, news with them is Ashton Martin. And once again, you had Lance Stroll finishing in points and Sebastian Vettel not finishing at all. And Mike, you and I had the discussion a while back where they brought in Nico Hulkenberg as a reserve driver. And even though they spent so much money on Seb, they might just replace him mid-season. Because it, it doesn't look like he's really making an effort. <laughs> well, I, you know, it's a mental game just as much as it is uh, anything else. And, you know, when you've had the success that, that Sebastian has had and then just the last years, it, it's going to wear on your confidence as a driver. It's going to wear on your confidence as a competitor. And, uh, you know, he just might be to the point where – I don't know. It's, it's hard to get into his head, but he just might not have the drive that he w once had, or he, he has the drive, but he doesn't have the confidence to follow through. Jazz. I know you want to chime in on this. No, it was a, it was a little rim shot. No, he doesn't, he, doesn't have the, <laughs> he doesn't have the drive. He once had. I love it. <laughs> not a bing. Um, yeah. I mean, but you see people like Kimi Raikkonen, um, Lewis Hamilton is actually older than Seb. And you yeah. see that you see that you, st you still see that drive from even Kimi Raikkonen, even Alonso coming back, having that drive, finishing higher than Seb. The car is there because Lance Stroll has proven it. Mm -hmm. But what did what did he come in eighth? Lance Stroll. Lance came in eighth. Mm -hmm. uh, Seb finished in fifteenth. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, well, eighth is such he, a good he result. He didn't for finish him. at all. He crashed out, didn't he? No, what actually what he did, what which was sad. he spun off. He spun off. Yeah. He he actually didn't even finish. He didn't even drive over the finish line. He went in the pit lanes and parked the car. Yeah, that's that's attitude though. That's you know, and, and that yeah. comes down to an individual. Uh, it, it you know, not all the drivers are going to have the same mentality, and I think I think he's broken as far as his mentality. Mm -hmm. you know? if what, what do you guys think about this? I feel like it might be different for, for champion drivers because, like, if you're a championship driver, right, let's say you're a driver who's won a world title. If you don't win another world title, what are you driving for? And I'm not even saying that from, like, a fan's perspective. I'm saying that from, uh, from the driver's perspective, right? So, like, um, take an Alonzo, take a Sebastian, right? If if they don't win another title this season for them, doesn't change anything as far as their legacy is concerned. Maybe, I mean, they get a few more points, but as far as their legacy is concerned, it's not going to change anything. They're still going to end their career with the same number of titles that they had. So it's really just kind of like driving for money. And then if you're driving for money, it's literally a job. And I think <laughs> that might be even what you're seeing on some level. You're they're treating it like a job or at least that is. Well, to that point, I think probably someone like Alon Alonzo wants the thrill for it. Um, and honestly, you got to ask the, the question that to the drivers themselves. I mean, we could ponder it all day long. But like for someone like Kimmy, who has been at this for almost 20 years, um, he is just under my age, honestly. And he's still going at it, but he – I've. I don't know if it's something that he just wants to have like a record book of the most starts and finishes or the most starts in a race or something like that. I don't know, but it is just, it is something that has to be, you know, and once again, it also could be just like the drive. He just, they just want to race. They want to be behind the steering wheel of that car. Or as you probably pointed out. And with, with Alonzo, I could see that a lot more. I could see like, I could see it being a, an identity thing for Alonzo. I mean, not to get too much like, you know, in people's heads or like making up shit, but like, I don't know, like Alonzo, like, it, it feels like he would be the kind of guy that has been a driver 
has all his entire life been known as a driver his entire life right like um like since he was a kid he's been the best guy Mm -hmm. uh you know whereas fethel on the other hand he's just a he's a he's a different animal I, i i feel to some extent like it was the right place right time he's a great driver that's that's not debatable and, no, and nobody would debate it um but he was also in the best car at the time um so it, it's it's it definitely doesn't change anything it is definitely not an asterisk on his on his career or anything crazy like that um but i think it might explain a little bit of why um you know when he went to ferrari it wasn't wasn't quite the same and, and the team that he won his championships with, with was Red Bull. So, right. Should have stayed with Red Bull. <laughs> it should have. <laughs> and all the people with Ferrari in a bad time, too. I mean, that, that's, and again, it just my, his, his confidence might be eroded at this point. But if you have the chance to go to Ferrari, I mean, you kind of go to Ferrari. Yeah. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, if you have, it's, it's like anything else. It's if you're in baseball and the Yankees call, you go. Yeah, you really yeah, you suck. We go. Uh, the, the Yankees, though, you know. <laughs> but the Yankees, you know, that's Ferrari. You know, that those are the top teams of their sport. You know, they got the backing and the money, and I don't know. Well, we got some more bad news for uh, Ashton Martin. Apparently, they're trying. They they seem not to downplay it as much now, but I'm trying to read this right here. As far as uh, Ashton Martin could take F1 to court over this. This is absolutely ridiculous, in my opinion. But Ashton Martin's team principal has refused to rule out taking the FIA to court due to regulations changes that have severally hindered them and their team in Formula One champions Mercedes this season. A series of modifications made last year have reduced the downforce available from the rear floor, which has haunted the teams with low rate cars, including Ashton Martin. In other words, um, this was all decided last season of how they're going to break the cars. In other words, how high the back wheels place on the back of the car. See, Red Bull right now is having a fantastic season because they're a little lower to the ground. They have don't not much more downforce. Actually, I'm sorry. Red Bull is actually a little higher. Both Mercedes and Ashton Martin are a little bit lower, so they have to play with that downforce, and they're having a hard time doing that. So that was all settled last season. But now they want to change the rake, which they cannot do during the season. But they want to take the FIA to court over this. This is, I mean, what, well, what does that guess, do to the team mentally? <laughs> well, I guess the question is, why is it only affecting those two teams? Why isn't it across the board? Because if it's, a, if it's a regulation, it should be followed across the board. It means every car out there has the same restrictions to it. Well, they could play around with it. But once the season starts, you can't do it. See, so you said before, Red Bull has a little higher rake at the end of the car. Yeah, Mercedes, then Aston Martin, which was fine, which is an FIA regulation. But once the season starts, Red Bull can't fix it. If they have problems like mid-season, they can't fix that. But now, Aston Martin wants wants to fix that. Now, they there's a little quote from Total Wolf on this that he agrees with Aston Martin, but they they're not going to take the FIA to court. Mercedes is not, but it is. I don't know. It's just a, a ridiculous. I mean, it just came out uh, earlier about this. So I think this is something we need to talk about. But uh, once again, this is just almost, excuse my language, asinine on that part. And what does that do to a team mentally? If you're saying, oh, we're going to sue. It's like, what if in your case there, uh, Mike, what if the uh, Detroit Lions sue, sues the NFL over, you know, grass regulations or the way the helmets fit? Because they, that's the way to design it. You We're making know, them play other teams. Make them play other teams, you know. What does that do to a team? What does that do to the drivers mentally? It's like uh, we have this other issue going on, but yet we have to concentrate on what's coming up next. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, F1's always been very political. and, and True. <laughs> it, it's the race is fought 
I, I think in a lot of cases, the race is fought off the, off the grid than it is on the grid, just racing the cars. And this is something that drivers have commented on and owners and team managers and the FIA. And if you watch any of the historical documentation concerning F1, it always comes up. Uh, you know, back in the 70s, of course, it was all about safety and the safety of the courses and barriers and stuff like that. And then it was manufacturers and cars, you know, making the cars safer for drivers. And, and now it's gotten to the point now where I think the hair trigger is kind of like the hair trigger uh, tag that you can throw on something is it's for safety. So you know, we're going to do this and this is this regulation and they just throw that trigger word out there. Well, it's for safety. Well, if it's for safety, then again, my question is, why isn't it implemented on all the vehicles? Why is it just these two manufacturers that are being affected by it? And so that's, I'd have to read up more on it, but if, if Red Bull's not, not required to modify their cars to meet these, this regulation that apparently Mercedes and, and, uh, Alfa Romeo have to follow. My, my question would be why? What was the thought process behind it? And now Alfa Romeo, and again, you know, Mercedes Hamilton's coming back from P10 to get all the way back to P2. So I'm not really sure if that's affecting the Mercedes cars as much. Uh, I think Alfa Romeo might be using the Mercedes brand maybe to get their point across, but if you think about it, Alfa Romeo is not a very good team, so they might be using this as a way to complain their way into, I don't know. I don't know what their motivation is, but... Uh, you mean Aston Martin, right? Or Aston Martin. Aston Martin, I'm sorry. So, I, I don't... I, I guess I'd have to... I, I'm going to chalk this up to politics and the behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, certainly not bothering Mercedes as much as it, as it is bothering Aston Martin. And to be honest with you, uh, Ashton Martin's about 10 car crashes away from points. So they're okay with Williams. <laughs> well, honestly, Lance Stroll has finished in points past couple of races, but um, I think it's just an excuse for them trying to make up some ground that they quote unquote lost. So they're trying to make this big dust up about nothing basically, but they're trying to make up something that they, they could try to get like probably even Seb into points or something like that. But um, Chaz, what is your take on that? Are we seeing, are you seeing something different? Um, <clears throat> I think that uh, I, I I'm with Mike. I don't, I don't really know what their, their motivation is exactly. Um, I, I do have the question of whether it's a situation where it would cost them development points and that's what they're trying to avoid or um, they're, they're also not as good as Mercedes. So they can't like have something wrong with the car and still have a functional car. Right. Like um, which is pretty, pretty impressive. But or, I mean, because basically what we're seeing is that Mercedes is at a disadvantage and they're still have a high functioning, high performance car, which is yep. really a, amazing when you think about it. But um, yeah, I mean, they, it may be that simple. It may just be like what that they're trying to avoid development tokens, but then you, you can't have it both ways. You can't avoid no. using your development tokens and uh, still try to get, you know, tr try to sue the FIA in order to uh, to get the regulation changed. It, it just doesn't work that way. Before we move on to our last topic, which I'm really excited to talk about, I want to ask you guys what is your biggest takeaway from this past weekend? Chaz, I'll start with you, man. Hmm. Um, I, I haven't felt this way before. Um, I haven't probably felt this way in the last, I don't know, six, seven years. But uh, I legitimately feel like it is 100% not just possible but erring on the side of uh, of likely that uh, Mercedes does not win the drivers' championship. Hmm. That is a bold statement from you. Wow. Yeah. 
Mike, what do you think? Uh, what's your biggest takeaway from this past weekend? Uh, just the surprise of McLaren and Ferrari being as strong as they are and, uh, and getting excited about them getting in the mix, really, to kind of disrupt everything there at the top. I think, uh, uh, but I'm with Chaz. I think this is, if, if, if Hamilton is going to get beat before he retires, this is the year that he might fall. But it's not, he's not going to give it away either, which is going to make everything so exciting because him <laughs> and Verstappen are going to go wheel to wheel all the way down to the, yeah, I would not be surprised if this comes down to the last race and the winner of the driver's championship will have to win the race. Which I was pretty, I was pretty upset about. I was upset about the beginning of the race, obviously, because that was like, Verstappen is like, he's just too, he's just too wild, man. Like he, he's just like, I, I think, I think he's just pick his spots better. Like, I, I, and like, there's a certain times, especially at the beginning of the race, like, he, like, dude, chill out. Um, when he ran him off the, uh, when he ran Hamilton off the, off the course, uh, it was really upsetting, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I do think that they're really, really fast for stopping is a force to be reckoned with. They're not going to Mercedes is not going to give it away. I agree with you, Brock. I don't I don't there. I mean, yeah, they're definitely not going to give it away. Engineering is going to continue to get better. It just makes it really hard when you have Red Bull performing as well as they are. And you also have a, a second driver in Mercedes who's just not showing up. Right. Because, I mean, we, yeah. for, for as much as we, you know, we give Hamilton credit we have to give the whole system credit, right? We have to give engineering credit and we have to give credit to the fact that he's had a solid second driver for a lot of this. And he's benefited from being the number one driver of Mercedes. Uh, I mean, let's, let's not, let's not, uh, you know, mince words here. Botas has played second fiddle and, and Hamilton's has benefited from it. Even within races, he's gotten the superior strategy, but he's only been able to to execute that strategy because there's a second driver that's been willing to, to play second fiddle, right? right. Uh, that's been willing to play, play a decoy or to be a second, uh, a second driver that, um, that, that plays the, uh, the, the, the secondary strategy or, or the lesser strategy. You can't do that kind of stuff when somebody's finishing in eighth place. No. So, um, you know, it's, it makes it really hard when you've got that much pressure and so little support from your second driver, that that's the reason why it's kind of like, uh, I mean, you know, do, do I think Mercedes is going to give up and it, you know, they, they won't continue to get better? No, but I have a lot of confidence in, in what Verstappen can do and, and so little confidence in what Botas is, has been showing that he's willing to do that. It, it really makes it hard to say, see anything else. Well, it's just so Let's just hope it comes down to the last race because if that happens, we're going to make sure Chaz watches the race live. So we oh my god! Soon. <laughs> oh my god! Well, I said this before Somehow, the season. I, I, look, I don't want to harp Somehow. on this. I said this before the season started that this is going to be a close season. It will come down to either the last race or the second to last race, and it is looking like that way. But also, let me add to your point there, Chaz. Um, about you know having a good team behind you is also starts at the top and Toto Wolf has been a really an instrumental part of putting that team together. He's I mean, the best. He's oh. he's the best. He's the absolute best. He's a yeah. he's phenomenal. He's phenomenal. And and he he um you know I, I, there's there's no reason I, I was gonna say something about losing my hair if I have to if it goes out to the last race. <laughs> and I would somehow figure out how to lose my hair if I had to watch that race live. Well, you still but, have uh, eyebrows, so <laughs> get you a wig. <laughs> but but Toto is the he is the absolute best. He is as great or better than Hamilton at his position, in my opinion. He is fantastic. He will go down. He will go down in history as probably one of the best primaries of any F one team ever, and that's yeah. when you have that and you have the superior engineering, and you, you, all that comes together with two fantastic drivers. That's why Mercedes has been so dominant for so long. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, they put it all together. 
big time. Um, and I'm just busting your chops, Jazz. No, he's oh, not. I, oh I, I hope it's only a joke and I actually don't have to watch that shit. <laughs> no, I'm about I want the, to. I want no, to see about, that. The, about the recording it and keeping us all on lockdown until you get around <laughs> to watching the race eventually. I mean, good lord. This is 2004. <laughs> well, to your point, I tell, Mike, you what, I tell you what, here, here's here, if it comes down to that, if it comes down to the final race, I propose that we come over here, we'll throw some stuff on the grill for breakfast, and we'll sit down, the three of us, and we can film it, I guess, to piece together later our reactions to the race and stuff like that, and just, or, or maybe even stream it live. Uh, and, and I would be down for that. I would say we do that anyway, even though the champion's been proposed or whatever or decided by that time. I say we do that anyway. Yeah, we could do that. Absolutely. That'd be a good way to to finish the uh, the season, finish assuming the season. I'm in the co- the country, of course. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, just watch the race so I don't have to be on media lockdown. And do come on, <laughs> come on! I want to talk about it, man. I got. I didn't all watch the here. race. We're on going into Sunday. the Raiders meeting. I'm like, good, Chaz will be there. We get to talk. And I got one sentence. I was like, well, I didn't watch it yet, so don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I could tell Mike was about to ruin everything. <laughs> well, I figured you'd watched it by then. Golly. <laughs> it was Monday. Killing. It was Monday. <laughs> That's kind of odd because, Chaz, you'd normally watch it with a friend of ours, mutual friend of ours, Daniel, on Sundays. I know I was uh, I was double booked on Sunday, so mm. I, I wasn't able to watch it. But okay. yeah, I, I did. I did eventually get around to it after some uh, some razzing from Mike. <laughs> well, before we move on to our last discussion of the day, um, we have a new Twitter poll out there for you. Vote this week. Will Ashton Martin stay as a mid tier team this season? So let's vote on vote on that. At form of racing, make sure you go on there. Uh, the previous Twitter poll, luckily enough, we had it up. Unsurprising that they made a decision pretty much almost during the Imola race that where they're going to hill or we're going to have the second race in these U.S. of Americas. Um, the Twitter question we had: Who will host it? Sixty-six percent said it will be Las Vegas. Well, they're wrong. Is actually going to be Miami. It is Miami, in Miami bitch. That's going right. to be a road race. Is that going to be a road race? Technically, it is because it's in the parking yeah, lot of the uh, Hard Rock Stadium. Now they had a proposed earlier, like a couple of years oh, ago. Of gonna, doing a, gonna, hold on, they're going to they're going to block off a parking lot. Yes. Yeah, they're just going to go in circles like NASCAR. <laughs> No, I'm actually going to put it up on the screen. Because right? they used to have it in Miami. It was a downtown race like uh, like uh, Monte Carlo. Well, that was going to be the original proposed plan, but I guess the neighbors there didn't want loud noises or whatever, because I would have loved to see that, because it would, would, would have gone from downtown over the bridge into the island and came come back around. Come back around, yeah. I would love to see that, especially at night. But uh, I think the neighbors complained that it would be too loud for them, so they moved it to the Hard Rock Stadium, which is not in an oval. It's, you know, has 19 corners. It's it's pretty amazing with three straightaways, three DRS zones. And the contract is good for 10 years with the city of Miami. Wow. Um, wow, that's awesome. Also, what's also planned here, let me read this off for you. Um, planning on being on the calendar of the second quarter, which will be opposite of Austin, which it makes sense because mm-hmm. one – you have the NFL. They got to prepare for that, so you can't have a racetrack and NFL stadium right there, right, right next to each other. Plus, that also gives an excuse to have something back to back with Canada when they mm. come here during the springtime. Uh, just one request, though. One request: have this at night. Please have this at night. That's all I'm asking. That'd be badass. Yeah, I'm looking That'd at the sick. layout. I'm looking at the layout of the race course. <laughs> wow it's it looks weird it, yes in the freaking parking lot are you kidding me it's in the parking lot let, well let's see what they could do because the pit lane the paddock is in the stadium itself 
What's on the to be on the East now, if you look if you look at it, there's the one little straightaway right there that's right by the stadium, and that's the pit lane. Yeah. Yeah, with the with then they got yeah, I see that. It says from the top of the stadium you can see the whole track. So that's where you're gonna that's where you want to be, is in the stadium. <laughs> so you can see the whole thing. And it I looks would, like they, they pass pretty close on one of the uh I mean they, they pass almost they pass almost close to each other in the parking lot. That is wild. I wouldn't be surprised if they start selling tickets inside the stadium to have like an atmosphere in there. Oh yeah, we we'll put it up on the screens. Oh yeah, the screens. Yeah, huh. that'll be interesting. That'll be cool. What do you think about the chat? Be able them actually maybe one of the uh, one of the smaller races, uh, to yeah. be honest, because because mm-hmm. uh, that stadium can't hold nearly as many people as normally go to Formula One races. I mean, we're talking about tens of thousands versus you know a hundred thousand plus at a lot of these races uh just including like the uh the grass and stuff well from what i'm looking at they have grandstands set up around the course oh okay yeah yeah if you Um, sit inside the stadium you won't be able to see any of it but to your point Chaz, the layout of the track itself seems smaller than normal races too i don't have a uh an actual um, length of the course itself, but it has 19 corners. Um, Coda has 20 itself. Bahrain has 15, but um, yeah, I don't have the actual length, but from the, what it looks like of the overlay, as Mike was looking at too, it doesn't seem very long at all. It's like a mile and a half, I think. Possibly. <laughs> so there's just going to be like uh, like 91 laps? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. They don't really have a whole. I'm on F1.com and they don't have a whole lot. They got the layout, but it doesn't have too many, too many uh, stats, statistics on how long. No, not yet. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't even have the like the length of it. Um, I mean, once, once again, I once again, I prefer if it was downtown, but I understand you know the noise ordinance, but. Second option, man. All the people one day the here. they're old anyway, they can't hear nothing. Just tell them to turn down their <laughs> you so tell one them that day a year. You tell them that one day a year, and you're Get in, off in my there. lawn. All right, we'll do it in a parking lot. <laughs> oh man, well, let me throw this something at you too. The right, uh, hold on before we go, that here, here's I just I got the, st- the stats. Okay. The track is 3.36 miles, 19 oh. corners. Average speed is 138 miles an hour. Specifically designed for the Miami Grand Prix. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's, it's slow. It's a slow track. Well, well, I mean, it's so many corners, I guess. Well, there's not too many straightaways. Well, that one yeah. big long straightaway in the back, but then you got to slow down real quick because then you got about a 90 degree left hand turn <laughs> i love that but i'll, but, I'll uh, monaco well they have three drs zones so i have three straightaways on there yeah but they're not that long no so you just might get up to about 140 and then have to hit the brakes to slow down <laughs> 140 in the hard rock stadium so, parking lot so so the, the straightaway that's the longest drs zone the very next curve goes almost back the other way, like Monte Carlo or uh, Monaco. Mm. I mean, it's I wonder how almost, passable it is. How what? How Pass- easy it is to, to pass? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how wide the how wide yeah. it is. That's a good question. Well, we talked about this sometimes earlier. They'll do. Go ahead, no, go ahead, bro. No, well, I was go- just saying saying that. Um, Mike and I were talking about this uh, a few weeks ago when they introduced the Jetta course for this year. It is very narrow. It is also a street course. So normally with street right. courses, there is not that wide. Right. What they'll do a lot of times, like, like they did in, um, this past weekend, is they'll extend the DRS zone because uh, not, there's not a lot of space to pass. So they'll extend it to, you know, around, around the curve a little bit. 
Well, be interesting. It'll be interesting to see, though. It's, it's, it's just nice to see a second race here. Yeah. Oh, it's great. So great. I, I was I was pulling for Watkins Glen still, but me too. I looked, I looked into it. They would have to put almost. They'd have to put so much work into that course to get it ready for any race. I don't even think they use it for NASCAR anymore. They just use it for a weekend or so, run around it, but. It needs a lot of work for it safe enough to put F1 cars on. <laughs> An historic race, historic track. Yeah. Go on. Well, let me throw this out at you before we get out of here. Um, the head of the FIA in Formula One states that next year they're planning once again for a 23 race calendar, including Miami. Um, within five years, they want to include Africa, most likely South Africa, as a track. And they want to bring back the option of Vietnam as well. And honestly, me too, because I want to see that track in Vietnam. It looks fantastic. But Yeah. Um, Agreed. One thing with the 23 race schedule, you're going to have to include Canada in there again uh, with Miami coming in. So someone has to leave. Um, I'm guessing probably Singapore will go bye-bye. Um, maybe Amala will not be on the calendar again. Um, Singapore maybe, is a great track. I, I love, I like Singapore. I love, that's my favorite track because that's the very first track I got to see on television watching Formula One. So that it has a place in my heart for that. Yeah. So I, I want, I don't want to see it go, but considering what else they have, you know, they might have to. Plus, Talk about Ping coming back, the Malaysia Grand Prix coming back too. There's also I wonder what that. they're trying to do though. Like, is it is this some sort of strategic money move? Because oh, yeah. uh, I mean, of course, the United States is a bigger market, but I mean, Singapore is not a small market. No, I mean, I, and I know that they, you know, they haven't made a commitment to cut anybody. I'm just saying, like, Singapore is is uh, uh, is a money market. If well, I have. I would, I'm glad to see it going to these places because F1, if anything, and we've seen that here in Austin, Texas, when F1 comes to town, everybody makes money. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a good, it's a good economic boost to the country that, or especially the, the city that hosts an F1 race. Right. There's so much economic upturn from just having that event that and it's not just those three days. I mean, it's the entire week. Because right. teams go up a week early, they got the pre, they got the teams that come unpack everything, set up those ungodly mobile homes they call them, which are those are crazy, those are nuts. But they got to set those up. <laughs> they got to get all the garages taken, you know. So so you've got a bunch of the support staff and everything coming in, buying hotel rooms, going out to drink, going to restaurants. So yeah, it's good to see them go into Vietnam and into South Africa to boost their economies. Uh, with having this race, and and it's a world stage, so everybody's going to watch the race. And you know, kind of put your country, uh, you know, on the on the on the TV and in front of everybody's eyes, which draws more tourism and stuff to the region. So it's it's I can't see anything bad thing about it. But just to age myself, the first one of the first races I watched uh, on TV was Monaco, obviously because ABC Sports used to carry it back in the seventies. Uh, that and uh, the Nuremberg ring, mm. which I could never understand because they, they couldn't cover the entire ring with TV cameras back then. So it was a lot of waiting for the cars to show up. <laughs> well, to your point, Mike, um, one, if I was in charge of the 401 calendar, one, um, I would keep our ring, but I would get rid of Abu Dhabi. I would get rid of Sochi, sorry, Russia. And I would make Brazil as the final race of the season. Oh, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. But introduce Vietnam, bring back Malaysia, bring keep Singapore, even though we're adding more races to the calendar. In fact, the FIA director said, you will not see a 52 race calendar. You will not see that. And you will not see, again, race, races back-to-back -back 
on weekends like they did last, well, that's, last year. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough to do just because of that support. I mean, they got, there's so much that goes into just moving that, the whole race from one location to another, they need a couple of weeks to unpack everything and break it down and then move it and then pack it back up and put everything back together. So I, I can see that a 50, a 52 uh, race season for us would be amazing, <laughs> but I think you would have to have teams would have to hire two and three and four uh, companies to manage setting up at one place while you're finishing a race here and having the du an exact duplicate of, of what you have in the next race. That way you don't have to tear this down and move it in a week and, and then put it back up again. So, uh, costs like, more money. yeah, kind of like the Rolling Stones when they go on tour, you know, they do, they go back to back cities and I didn't know this until they came here, but they have five stage sets. And so they're setting up the next show while they're doing a show and then tearing down a show behind and then they have two extras in case something happens with the ones that are there they can shoot those in real quick and they hop leapfrog because i was thinking to myself how the hell can they move all this stuff from here and then in three days you're going to be in atlanta well that's how they do it and so they, <clears throat> right now it's just such a logistical nightmare to move one team from you know imola to what was the next race? Uh, Portugal. Portugal. Week, so they got to move weekend. everything that they had in Imola. They got to break it down, pack it up, get it into shipping containers, and then get it to Portugal yeah. on a boat <laughs> or a plane or however the hell they get it there. But that's that's a that's a huge logistical thing to do. So yeah, yeah, I can see every two weeks. I, I get that. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, I'm glad. Another 30 or 23 race season next season, though. We'll see. By the way, Mike, no uh, Murray Walker quote of the week this week, huh? I didn't catch one. I didn't catch I didn't one. Either. I was listening. I watched, I actually watched the race twice. Before I could watch it once. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. I get it, Mike. I get it, <laughs> get it Mike. <laughs> uh, that seems like something good to end up. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. Uh, remember our Twitter question of the week. Will Aston Martin be a mid-tier team by the end of the season? Also, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at Form of Racing. Also, the same for our Facebook page. And join the conversation. We would love to have you racing at gmail.com give us an email give us a topic what you want to discuss so um, until next time we'll see you right here on the F1 starting grid